this module talks about confidence interval estimates for difference between two means. But in this case, we'll talk about a case where our samples are dependent. First of all, we'll look at the difference between independent samples and dependent samples. Two samples are called independent when the subjects selected for the first sample do not determine the subjects in the second sample. Contrary to this, two samples will be dependent when the subjects in the first sample determine the subject in the second sample. The data from dependent samples are called matched pairs or paired samples. We also use the term related or paired observations for such type of samples. So paired observations may be obtained in a number of ways. The same subject is measured before and after receiving some intervention. Littermates of the same sex may be assigned randomly to receive treatment or placebo. Similarly, the pairs of twins or siblings may be assigned randomly to two treatments in such a manner that members of single pair receive different treatment. Let us take an example and learn about the paired samples. In this example, we will talk about a blood pressure, blood pressure patient. We will make two observations, one before the treatment and other after the treatment. Here, we'll calculate the mean and standard deviation before the treatment. And then we'll calculate mean and standard deviation blood pressure after the treatment. And when we compare these two, when these two before and after observations are obtained from the same respondent, from a same person, the samples will be called as dependent or paired samples. We check for certain assumptions. The first assumption that we check, if the two samples are independent or dependent, and second is that if the, the distribution of the differences is normal or not. Here, we are discussing a special scenario where two groups are dependent and the population of the sample differences is normal. Instead of performing the analysis with individual observations, we use di, that's the difference between pair of observation as a variable of interest. And n, the sample difference is computed from the n pairs of measurements that constitutes a simple random sample from a normally, normally distributed population of differences. To calculate the confidence interval, we'll start with the general, general form of confidence interval estimate that requires an estimator plus minus the reliability factor multiplied by the standard error of estimate. Here, the expression of, for constructing a confidence interval for the difference in paired means is almost identical to the formula for constructing a confidence interval for one mean. Note that only change in the subscript D, which stands for difference. So here, X bar D represents the average difference before and after. And in the standard deviation, you would see SD, which is the standard deviation of the difference. And together, SD over under root N will give us the standard error of the sampling distribution of the difference between mean. Here, T alpha by two nu is a reliability factor that comes from the T distribution, where nu is the degrees of freedom. And in this case, since we, our respondent will be one person and obs two observations are taken from that single respondent, hence our sample, will, uh, our sample size will be N and hence the degrees of freedom will be N minus one. Let's take an example where John Morton examined gallbladder function before and after fundoplication, a surgery used to stop stomach contents from flowing back into the esophagus. In patients with gastroesophageal reflux disease, the authors measured gallbladder functionality by calculating the gallbladder ejaculation fraction before and after the treatment that is fund application in this case. So the goal of fund application is to increase GBEF, which is measured as a percentage. The table given below shows the percentages pre-op 
and post op. Here we have this information for 12 individuals. The data consists of 12 individuals, and from those 12 individuals, 24 observations are made. 12 observations are made before fund application, and 12 observations are made after this fund application. So here we shall perform the statistical analysis on the difference in pre op and post op GBEF. We may obtain these differences in one of the two ways. The first way is to subtract the pre op percent from the post op percent, or the other way is to subtract the post op percent from the pre op percent. So let us obtain the differences by subtracting the pre op percent from the post op percent. And this gives us D, where D is the differences between the pair of observations. So hence we have 12 differences obtained. So here, researcher measured gallbladder functionality by calculating the gallbladder ejaculation fraction before and after fund application. Now we have to check the assumption. And the first assumption is to check for the dependence of the measurement. And in this case, if you look at how the observations are measured, these are 12 individuals giving observations before and after. Hence, we have two groups, before fund application and after fund application. Hence, the samples are dependent. The second assumption is of normality. And to check this assumption, we see if it's already known and stated in the statement. And if not, we practically uh, you know, perform a goodness of fit test. So here in this situation, we uh, can see in the statement that assuming the samples are obtained from the population that follows a normal probability distribution, hence the statement is already given to us. So we'll use this information and assume that the samples comes from the population that follows the normal probability distribution. Since in the given situation, both the observations are being made from the same respondent, hence they are considered dependent observation. And normality of the distribution between the difference holds true. It is established that this is a situation where we have to measure the confidence interval for the difference between two means where the samples are dependent. The 100 into 1 minus alpha percent confidence interval for this data can be given as this, where first of all, we have to calculate the average difference, that is D bar. And for this sample, it turned out to be 18.075. And, and the variance, which is SD square, is obtained at 1068.0930. So, so using these values into the confidence interval estimate formula, we'll get using the reliability factor at T0.025, that is a two-tailed value at 11 degrees of freedom, the reliability factor is 2.2010. Including all these values into the formula, we get two values. First is minus 2.69, and other is 38.84. Here, it is important that we point out that how we use T distribution to calculate this reliability factor. We look at T0.975 and the degrees of freedom that is 11. And these two values intersect at 2.2010, which is our reliability factor, which is obtained from the table for the percentiles of the T distribution. We can say that if we were to repeat the study many, many times and compute confidence interval in the same way, about 95% of the intervals would include the difference between the population mean. Since the interval includes zero, we conclude that the means before the treatment and after the treatment may be equal. A key concept in this is that we consider the difference of matched pair data as a sample and perform inferences on the sample of differences.